wins the Macau Grand Prix. What a finish. Oh, I've seen some close finishes in my time here, but that just takes it all. And Desperate Dan does it in style at the Macau Grand Prix. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to the FIA Formula 3 World Cup from Macau for 2018. Macau Grand Prix, special place, very, very special place. The track is a real measure for teams and the drivers, time consuming as well. It uh, starts two, three weeks uh, before, it's very intense uh, preparation. If you have anything forgotten, there's no plan B. First time we, we ever came here was in 2004 in Formula Renault with Scott Speed. It's a, it's a long history for us now, it's a 15th year. We were very fortunate last year to enjoy the, the win. Like we've been working for, for many years, so, uh, and that one probably when so much effort goes into um, are getting even uh, more sweet uh, as a win and stick up more in the memory. And Tictum goes quickest with a 2.11.0. Ilot second with 2.11.1. 2117. The two Brits are absolutely on it here at Macau. One and two and split by and that means that Dan Tictum is the fastest man on day one at the Macau Grand Prix. most important qualifying sessions, not just of their year, but also possibly of their careers. And last year's winner, Daniel Tictum. Green lights, 30 seconds to go, 30 seconds to go, green lights. I'm so glad the director is staying with the onboard pictures because that's what makes Macau. It really does. You get an absolute insight to what it's like to drive around this crazy circuit. It really is uh, in every good way. He can do two pushes. Bloody brilliant, as uh, <laughs> Rob Huff described it. Yeah, that's, quote. that's a quote. That's a quote. Okay, okay. The hill towards very, very tight left hand. Watch how close he is to the wall here. <laughs> Qualifying resuming, and now the battle is on. Forget, forget, have, there's no rush. There's exactly no rush. Just under half an hour of racing to go. Reset. Reset. Back positioning is really good. I, alongside me, John Green. Third fastest sector time. Here's Daniel Tickton, the real man. Everything feels very good. He's Everything okay. He was good. ahead of the flag that was out, so he's got no problems here as he comes out of Fisherman. Uh, this is an important lap for the man placed ninth. Last year's winner, the Red Bull man, comes to the last corner. Daniel Tickton of Great Britain comes to the line now. Is it good enough? He crosses the line and goes from ninth to first. A 2-10-1-9-8 from Danny Tictum. Dan Dare. Yes, he does. One more lap. Go on, Danny boy. Push, 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 push. 
One more lap for Tickton, but will it be fast? I don't think so. He did a good first and second sector, but uh, I don't think the midsection has been quick enough. Tickton crosses the line now. Does he P1, do his 210 I doubt it. Well, he might. He does. <laughs> a 2099. Whoa, folks. We are getting a display. We've had Dan Dare. We've just had Desperate Dan. Woohoo. Go, son. 2099. Tickton then did exactly the perfect job. With two minutes to go, he put in the perfect lap in many ways, a 209.9. And that is record breaking. I don't know, we, we don't seem to use the tyres as much as we did last year. So you get a couple more laps on the tyres, it's almost you get three or four. So, I mean, I wasn't overly worried, but you know, when I had the, the red flag and then the full course yellow, I was like, this is turning into what it was for me last year. Because at that point I did 11.7, so I, I was nowhere, had no laps. And then um, I tried to get the gap as best as possible after the full course yellow. I knew, knew that would be my only shot. Maybe I would get one lap. So the first lap I did, the 10.1, had to be you know, pretty much perfect. And uh, luckily I got another, another lap after that. And I just managed to iron out a couple of mistakes from the previous lap. good season in Formula 3. Um, I finished fourth in the end in the championship but I had a lot of DNFs that prevented me from fighting for possibly even the championship but I think that was in the end out of reach uh, but definitely I could have got second place because of that I got the opportunity with, uh, with Red Bull uh, to join their junior team which is amazing honestly and uh, yeah I'm running their livery in, uh, in Macau this weekend which is really a great honor. I'm just hoping to, to kind of make up for it in Macau this weekend by taking a win which will be really really special to do it on the first time and the pace so far this weekend has been really really good uh, definitely in the top three the whole time so uh, yeah looking forward for tomorrow. So we are here in Macau, uh, it's the third time for me here, uh, last year the pace and the speed was very very good, uh, but I was a bit unlucky, I crashed with a Carlo Mailot in a race, we qualified P4 in the qualifying two, I think we should have a, should have a good run tomorrow and um, then I'm sure the pace and the speed is very very good, so uh, let's, let's see what's, what's going to be tomorrow. Malaki. Good morning everyone and welcome to the main event of the 65th running of the Macau Grand Prix, the FIA Formula 3 World Cup. This is an event that's been run since the early 80s, first won by Ayrton Senna. It's graduation day one more time here at the Macau Grand Prix, the qualification race about to start. Dan Tictum on the left hand side of your screen will start from pole and fellow Brit Callum Eilat will start alongside him. Who will get the jump down towards Lisboa? And who will come through the field? A 10 lap sprint race, green flag waves at the back. We're about to go racing in Macau. Out go the lights and away we go. And Tictum gets away well. Fadishra starts well too. Eilat slots into second place. A really good start by the pole man. 
Daniel Tictum as he leads them through the first corner. And he's chased hard as the cars spread out down towards Mandarin. But it's Tictum right behind him. Fanastraz is there too. They're all spreading out now as they head down through the Mandarin corner. But it is Daniel Tictum and uh, Kevin Eilon. Eilon's finally got him as they head down towards Lisboa. Absolutely fantastic uh, when you see for the first time. Side by side, Eilon holds on. And there's a rush with the wall as well on the exit of Lisboa. Just the left rear wheel brushing the uh, tyre wall yeah, there. Look at him side by side as they head down from Mandarin. Fantastic on-board shot. Tictum pouncing. Will the Red Bull man make his way? He goes to the outside, but that's the long way round here at Macau. Islet just has to break as late as he dare. Oh, he's done it. Can he get round the corner? He has to turn in. I'm not sure he's done it. He has got through. Yes. Brilliant stuff by Dan Tictum. And Dan Tictum's in a world of his own at the moment, doing a really good job as he heads out of Moorish Hill, down towards Don Maria. Yellow flag at MP16, at Marshall Post 16, and that is police. Oh, there's a dog on the track. What a shame, and that will obviously bring out a full course yellow, and he's still a young man as we go on board again with Joel, ready for that inside move here at the Mandarin last time out was superb. And look at the look at the drive he's got here on here Eilat. Go. He's right there and he takes the inside. Oh, squeezing him. Callum Eilat, that was a little tough. Hopefully he's a steward, but he's got through. And that was brilliant stuff by Joel Eriksson. And defend as he might and squeeze the uh, Swede as he tried. Eilat couldn't stop the obvious. And Eriksson is through and now goes in for Sue. Hughes and Schumacher up as well. Daniel Tictum will take the chicken flag. The man from London, the 19-year-old, goes back to back here at Macau. He won the Grand Prix last year, and now he's won the qualification race this year. Initially, my intention was just to finish in the top three, you know, uh, finish in a good position for tomorrow. But it was clear in, you know, even the first lap, half lap, that uh, our pace was a bit stronger. So really tried to nail the last sector and get some good exits out the last two corners which i did and managed to get him back yeah it was, it was pretty close but uh yeah and then the dog um well i feel like someone's tried to set me up to <laughs> to try and make it more difficult for me but you know uh you just have to treat it like any other incident you know the safety car comes out and you just gotta stay calm and focus on getting a good restart and uh, keeping everything up to temperature etc so uh yeah uh, pretty <laughs> interesting but uh yeah i managed to deal with it quite well i think so yeah good afternoon everyone and a warm welcome to macau once again we've had a little bit of break as we get ready for the grand finale quite literally here at macau And there's nothing between them. They're side by side coming to the last corner. Habsburg's got him! Habsburg's got him! Ah. Uh. Camera hits the wall! Some dude is Habsburg! So Sergio was definitely running out of tyres. And um, it, it played to my advantage because in the end I was a lot faster than the leading car. Uh, it was my opportunity. I knew I had one more chance at the last corner. And I knew my only way to win this race was to go around the outside. I cannot do a cutback. I was so obsessed with winning the race, second place was just completely pointless. And I noticed I was going in the wall, in the lead, in the Macau Grand Prix with 100 meters ahead of me. And the only thing I could think about was going full throttle. You see the car, you see the helmet, and, and the closest thing you can realize between the the driver and, and, and the whole scenario is the helmet moving a little bit on the straight. That's where your, your closest relation to, to that as a human being. But what you don't realize is that inside that helmet is actually a kid who is crying because he is so emotional. You need to, you, wait, no one has to think about that. You know, there's just a little kid in there. And Daniel Dictum wins the Macau Grand Prix! It's 
very special event. One of the biggest things you can win in, in your career. Really exciting. It's only place where, where my parents come to see in my races. It would be nice to stand on a podium in front of them. And away we go, and a good start from Tickton. Likewise, Joel Eriksson gets away. Red flag, red flag. It's all good. So here we go, and Tickton's got away well at the restart. And it comes on the inside of Fenestras. He's got the line as they go to Lisboa, and he will take second place. Brilliantly done by Joel Eriksson. Dan Tictum is repeating history and repeating history for himself. Dan Tictum is going to come and take back-to-back -back victories at the Macau Grand Prix. Tictum does it for Great Britain here at Macau in style. He has absolutely dominated this race from start to finish. And I mean the weekend, not just the race. What a weekend for Dan Tictum. Brilliant stuff by the Englishman. And yes, finally, it's size all round. And Tictum has done it. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Woo -hoo! The winner of the Macau Grand Prix of 2018, Dan Tictum. Dan Tictum then takes on the, the top podium. on the podium for the second time in a row here. Joel Eriksson! And his teammate Joel Eriksson now steps out, the lead figure the cool Swede. Timo Rupkyle, who is the owner Timo of the team. Timo Rupkyle of the uh, Motor Park Academy. Motor Park. There you go. Brilliant stuff. Special weekend for us and uh, probably uh, an emotional way to say uh, goodbye to Formula 3 as well from our end. Best weekend of my life it was just perfect. The emotion of, of winning at the end was just incredible, you know, to win it twice is very rare, absolutely ecstatic. The team produced, I think, one of the best cars the team's ever produced at Macau, so big thanks to them. And uh, yeah, it was just overall a very, very, very strong weekend.